Bonjour. Je m'appelle Shane Cassels. Je viens d'Irlande, mais aujourd'hui, j'habite à Londres. Et c'est tout. <laughs> That's it. That is the extent of my baccalaureate French. Um, unless uh, somebody wants to be my pen pal. Um, so yes, this is all I, I'm going to say in French. I'm going to move back into English because uh, my French is not up to it. Um, we've had a great morning. We've been hearing a lot about uh, different things that we can do with advertising and how powerful advertising can be and how we can deliver better ads to our, to our users um, at the right time, in the right place, and, and give them the information they need to go on and do what we want them to do on our sites. So, I work in uh, Northern and Central Europe, and I go around and I visit our advertisers in Northern and Central Europe and talk to them about their analytics and interpreting their analytics and understanding what it is they want their analytics to do, which a lot of people don't know, and, uh, and asking them, well, what do you want to do with your analytics and going through the data with them and seeing if they've set it up right, but then also looking at their websites and seeing how can we make the web experience better on all the different devices and that, and create better experiences for users, sell more things, get a better return on investment, and spend more money with Google. Um, so that's, that's what I do. Um, today, I want to talk to you a bit about analytics and some interesting developments we have in Google Analytics for you and hopefully to help you to deliver better experiences for your users and ultimately spend more money with Google. Okay, so let's imagine a person. Um, I'm going to call this person Sandrine because I love that name. Is there anyone here named Sandrine? Oh, so unfortunate, a beautiful name. But anyway, Sandrine is a figment of my imagination. She doesn't really exist, but uh, I just wanted to use um, a, a name because if I called her X12748, it wouldn't be nearly as evocative for you. So let's call this person Sandrine. And Sandrine is a person who wants to get a gift for her mama. Okay? She wants to get her mama a gift, and she asks her friend, what would I get for a 65-year-old woman? And her friend says, well, what about a tablet? Tablets are pretty popular, so maybe a Nexus 7. That would be a great gift, wouldn't it, to get for a 65-year-old mother? So we're going to get a tablet. Now, the process by which Sandrine will go ahead and actually buy this tablet is a long and complicated one. And it's, she's going to go and do lots of searches and watch videos and research sites and maybe go on her phone and go on her tablet and go on a computer and watch ads on TV and all these kinds of things. In a world where all of those things are happening, session-based measurement doesn't really work. And right now, the way most of us use analytics is in a very session-based way, in that they come into our site, and we know they came into our site, and they leave, and God knows where they went, and things like that. So it would be great if we had a better view of how things are. As we imagine Sandrine's journey, as analytics stands now, well, when she goes onto her phone, we don't know about that. And, and when she decides to maybe go into a store or do some searches around on places and things like that, we don't know about that. Or maybe she's just going to go to other sites besides our own. Well, yeah, we don't know about that either. In fact, the journey we have an insight into at the moment with analytics is fairly limited. We can see that she talked to her friends and then she went on her tablet and she searched and she read an article on our site and then she maybe searched within our site, did a little bit more searching and then she made a purchase. And we all know that is not what Sandrine's journey was. But that's the only insight we have to it at the moment. Wouldn't it be great if we had a full view of Sandrine's journey? Wouldn't that be an amazing thing? Wouldn't it be great if we could know that, uh, not necessarily Sandrine, but just this person who is using offline advertising, online advertising, they're going in on their phone, they're going in on their tablet, they're going in on their, their computers. You heard earlier today about how people will switch between devices 27 times in a day. So imagine if you could actually see that journey happening and deliver the right ads at the right time to people based on where they are in the journey, what stage they are in the journey, but also what device they're on and that, and give them the appropriate advertising. Think of the benefits of this. So you can make better decisions. Better decisions because you actually have an idea of where this user is in their journey. 
and, and how to target them and what messaging you should be giving them. And a better performance as a result because you're delivering the right messages at the right time and getting the right responses to those messages at that time. And of course, greater efficiency because this is all automated. This is all going on through electronical systems that are like through, through software that is taking all of this data, anonymized data, and just delivering the right ads at the right time when people need these things. We call that universal analytics. And uh, this is a new product that we are essentially generating Google Analytics towards, is universal analytics. And it allows us to bring all of that data from all of those devices and all of those experiences into a single place and gather all of that information together and eliminate silos. Silos are not good things. And this, the way most of us have businesses today, does anybody here work in a company that doesn't have silos? Do you know what I mean by silos? So, you know, we have our, our content management system, and then we have our customer relationship management system, and we have our business insights, and we have our online analytics, and then we have the analytics that is tracking our apps, and then we're looking at our mobile side and things, and they're all very nicely isolated from one another. And this is not a great experience for the data, but it's also not a great experience for the user. I can give you a great personal example of this. So last year, I was, uh, I was, we were going to have a barbecue because it was, it was 14 degrees, which in London is barbecue territory. <laughs> and so we were going to have a barbecue, and I found this particular barbecue on this website that I really wanted, and it, it, because it, it cooked coal and things like that, and I wanted to have this. And I looked to see where was the nearest place that had one in stock, and it turns out that the place that was close to me actually had it in stock. And so I packed my two-year-old into the car, and anyone who has a two-year-old or has ever had a two-year-old will know the fun of going shopping with a two-year-old. And we walked into the car and we drove up to this store, and it was not in stock. It had not been in stock for two days. But the information on their site was not being updated by the information on their offline systems. They were not bringing all of their data together. I was not a happy customer. I did not buy another barbecue, and I have not been back to that store ever again. Um, so that was a bad experience, and that's why we don't want silos. We don't want to ruin the experience of a user by bringing them in place and not having the things that we told them we had because we haven't brought all of our information together. So we want to obliterate silos. And we want to do that within our companies anyway. Regardless of if you use using universal analytics, you want to be trying to obliterate silos within your company and be sharing information between the different departments. Universal analytics allows us, to some extent, to do all of that with our digital touch points. We can actually bring all of the data from the different digital touch points into a single place using universal analytics. So that means not just the digital experience of a person on your site, but also the different devices that they've been on. You can now bring all of that information together. And this creates this unified customer view. We don't know who the customer is. We just know that all of this data is for a customer. And what that means is that without knowing who it is, and that's a bit creepy, without knowing who it is, at the same time, we know the needs of that user. We know where that user is in the journey. We know when exactly to target them with the right kind of advertising to empower them to go on to do the things that they want to do at the stage of the journey that they're in. And that could be that maybe they're just interested now because I'm thinking of buying a Nexus 7, but I don't really know that much about them. So I'm going to send out ads about how Nexus 7s are great. And you, know, you should think about a Nexus 7 if you're thinking about a tablet. Or maybe now I've moved on to Desire and I want a Nexus 7. And so now we're going to start giving them a bit more information and bringing them to the parts of our site to give them more information about these things. And now we're in the action phase. And now I want to buy a Nexus 7. So I'm going to bring you straight to the product page. And I'm going to like, encourage you to click on that button and go through the process. And so we're, by knowing where customers are in the journey, we can actually give them not only the right ads, but we can bring them to the right place on our sites to enable them to do the things that they want to do when they come in. You know, you know like on the home page of a website, you'd say shop now, but on a product page, you'd say buy now, because it's a little early in the experience on the home page to be hit with a buy now button. And the same thing, we need to be thinking about not just how we target ads, but where we bring people to on our site so that it reflects the right point in the journey for that user and gives them the right information so they can go on and do what they need to do. OK, so this new cross-device view of 
X13478. Um, or Sandrine, this, this view, we can see now we've got all of these digital touch points and we, we can get a much fuller view of her experience online. But it doesn't end there. This is powerful stuff. So, imagine if you could bring the offline stuff into the same place. Imagine if you could combine the things you have offline and the things you have online. What if you're an online leads generated company and you, you generate leads but then the leads go on to phone calls and you have a phone call and then that's where the actual sale or, or conversion takes place. Or you've got people who actually go in and do meetings in person or go in and visit people and then that's where the conversion takes place. Or maybe you want to generate leads for remarketing purposes and you want to be able to remarket online or offline based on the different things that are happening in different places. You can do that now. You can actually do that. You can actually incorporate all of this data into one place and account for offline conversions as well when you're looking at all of your online data. Think about mobile. This is a great one. I hear people telling me all the time, mobile doesn't work. What's the point? Why are we targeting mobile? They don't do anything. That's obviously not true. I mean, all of you are, some of you are on your mobile now. Some of, thank you. And, but some of you, know, you, we're all using our mobile phones all of the time. And we're all going in and we interact with mobile. And maybe we're not ready to go ahead and make the purchase on mobile. But now we want to be able to see, well, what actually does all of that mean? What does it mean if a person does go in and interact on mobile? And then they go on and they make a purchase on a desktop or they go into a store or they, they, they go and do something on their tablet, or whatever it is, wouldn't it be nice to be able to actually see what that journey was and what the impact of those things was? So being able to actually allow in our ROI calculations for conversions that happen offline based on things that happen online, the person could even be in your store and on your site right now at the same time with their mobile device. Are they online or are they offline? No, seriously, where, where are they? They're both, um, and they could actually be in your competitor's store and be on your site, or they could be in your store and on your competitor's site. But the thing is that you know, we want to be able to allow for all of those things. We want to understand that online to offline um, interaction. And then, of course, we're doing that nice remarketing for those offline conversions. We found out that actually all that advertising was working that we were going to shut off. And, and it, it turns out it was working. It's just that people were going into stores and they were purchasing them there. And now we want to remarket to people who come in through these devices because we want to get them to continue on and make those purchases. Am I going slowly enough, by the way? I speak very quickly. I'm very sorry about that. I, they told me last night, you speak too quickly. So if you feel I'm speaking too quickly, just let me know. I don't mind. I won't get upset, um, particularly the translators. Um, OK, so then we can import offline information into our universal analytics as well. Um, so we can use custom dimensions which allows us to literally take information that we know in an offline world about types of customers and put it into universal analytics so that we can actually bring all of that information together. It still always remains anonymous. We don't know who the person is, but we're able to connect the dots together to work out types of people so that we can target types of people in types of ways and understand types of journeys. So for example, Sandrine is a female age 27, that kind of thing, and maybe her household income is around 46K, and we want to bring that stuff in so we can actually bring in the, this segmentation to, to, the, to the element as well. And then we can go in and see we have a full view of this journey now. We have got all of the offline things and the online things and the cross-device things, and we can get a much fuller view of this person or this experience. And we, can, and we can target at the right points, at the right point when they need us to target the different ways that we can. And we can ask ourselves questions about this data. We can actually go in now when we go into our own analytics and we can ask questions. We can go in and say, well, what do people who do this and do that generally go on and do? And what kind of search queries do people use when they're from this age category or when, they're, when they've gone in and done this kind of journey or they're based in this part of the country? Do people from Paris? have more devices? Do they use more devices to make a purchase? Should we, therefore, around Paris, be targeting more towards different devices? All of these little questions that we can ask ourselves, we don't know who the people are, but we know general things about them enough that we can actually target in different categories. And then we can target at the right time, as I said. The awareness, interest, desire, action. When is the right time to hit people with the right ads? And 
give them the right pages. I'm going to really emphasize this. Most people in the room are in marketing and they're going to kind of go, right, the right ads at the right time. But I really want you to get the other bit, the right part of the website, please. Because marketing people, have, they tend to get very focused on, because it's marketing, but you get very focused on the relationship between the keyword and the ad text. And then the keyword doesn't start, is not performing as well this week. That's fine, we'll just turn down the, the, the CBC. But we never ask, well, is the website part of the problem? And let's just stop and think for a second. How long do you spend, seriously, how long do you spend thinking of what keyword you're going to use? I'm asking you. <laughs> One second, two seconds, you know, does it even appear in seconds? Is the subconscious now I'm next to something? And it's gone. How long do you spend looking at the ads? Minutes, days, hours, seconds? I mean, we just look at them and go, yeah, 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 that one. And we click in. How long do you spend on the website? A lot longer than you spend thinking of a keyword and thinking of an ad. Unless the website was terrible, in which case you're gone again. So we should be spending a lot more time focusing on our websites. We should stop this business of always thinking in terms of just landing page, or just in terms of ad and, and keyword. It should be keyword, ad, landing page. And if things don't seem to be going well, we should check and make sure it's not because of the landing page that the problem is. We're not actually driving lots of people to a site where they go, this isn't what I was looking for, and they leave. Or this doesn't do what I expected it to do, and they leave. Or worst of all, this doesn't do what the ad said it was going to do, and they leave. And all you've done is cost yourself money, you know, and you cannot generate a conversion from a person who just leaves. So please always remember to focus also on the landing pages. So we have them at the right time. We know what is, what is the frame of mind of the, the person we're trying to target the ads towards, and we're driving them to the right part of the site and the right engagement so they can go on and do what they want to do at that stage in, in, in their search. Now, the last thing I just want to go into a bit is, is, is goals. You see, analytics is great, although it's a bit of a misnomer because analytics doesn't actually analyze anything. It could be called recordics, because really it records everything. And it takes people to analyze things. But you can't analyze things if you don't know what it is you're trying to analyze, or you don't know where it is you're trying to go, what it is you're trying to do. So before you even get into the whole going home, going, oh my god, was this guy in today from England? Ireland. And he was talking about all this great stuff you can do with analytics, and it was just it was brilliant. And wow. And so, but before you get into all of that and setting up the analytics and doing these things, remember you need to know what it is you actually want all of these things to do, all of these devices and all of these experiences, where you want it to lead and what you want it to do. You need to have company level goals for all of this. And those goals then can go down into your non siloed teams. And, and you can actually share these goals. And they can all have KPIs, key performance indicators, where you've chosen elements of that data that are going to decide for you whether or not your goals are working. And if your goals aren't working, you're going to ask why. And you're going to modify them. And you're going to actually set up goals that can work. And you're going to set stretch goals. And you're going to work towards those goals. Because all of this, all of this data, all of this wonderfulness, is useless if you don't know what you want. I probably should have started with that. But it's important that you know you think about all of those things. So the future of digital measurement will be incroyable. <laughs> That's my last word. Thank you. Okay, so Shane, I actually thought the marketers had their own motto, which is follow the money. <laughs> and what you're trying to frame today is that now we need to follow the users. Yes. Is it as simple as it seems? Or? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, where is the money? It's in the user's pocket. So technically, you're following the money when you follow the users. But the user journey is just so long and complicated, as, as we all know, because we're all users ourselves. And sometimes when we get caught up in thinking in terms of, God, this is all just so, think about you yourself or a person. How many people here have a tablet? 
a lot. Three new people, apparently. Yeah. How many people here have a laptop computer? Hello. OK. How many people here have a smartphone? I should have just let you all keep your hands up. How many people here think of themselves as different people when they use these devices? Yeah, exactly. OK, OK, a few weirdos down the end. But generally, we don't think of ourselves as different people. We think of ourselves as the same person. Um, so the user experience is going to be moving around all of these different devices. We have to think of users rather than devices. We have to think of users rather than ads and individual experiences or whatever. It's one experience. And the user never, apart from a few people over there, generally doesn't think of themselves as actually being a different person on whatever device they choose or whatever ad they see. So we follow the users. And we provide a great experience for the users, and they will provide a great experience for us if we do. Quelques questions qui pourraient émaner après le keynote de Shane. Une question juste ici. There's a hand in the middle. <coughs> le micro arrive pour vous permettre de la poser, cette question. Hello. Um, Hello. To be concrete, how uh, Google Universal Analytics is tracking a person mm. through multiple devices. Yes. And how do it recognize it? OK, so it recognizes users based on whether or not they're logged in when they go onto a site and that. So if they're not logged in, you won't necessarily be able to track them all the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Question clear, réponse clear. 